that the leadership of IPUB appreciate all your work, IPUB principal officers, everything you are doing, the results are coming up. But I've come this afternoon to ask you people, to beg you people, to put up more effort in this fight for the unconditional release of our leader and for the fight for the restoration of Biafra. One important point I want everybody to take home today is this. The extraordinary rendition of our leader, Mazin Nandekano, it is an issue that we are not going to sweep under the carpet. This particular issue is something that we need our media warriors, our Twitter warriors, all of us must go back to the drawing board because we need to alert, seriously alert the world and they put up the pressure on the Nigerian government. Thank God they are back on Twitter. The Nigerian government is back on Twitter. All their agencies are back on Twitter. It is our duty to go back to make sure we join voices with the foreign countries and ask Nigeria why they have refused to explain to the Western world why Nigeria have refused to answer the questions coming from the diplomatic mission over the extraordinary rendition of Mazen Namdekano. That is the question everybody must join voices because from the intelligence IPOB leadership have and IPOB family, many foreign bodies, many international communities are asking Nigeria to explain how Mazin Nandekano is extradited from Kenya to Nigeria and Nigeria is running away from answering these questions. It is very, very important that this issue will not be swept under the carpet. This is an issue that every dear friend, if you love Mazin Nandekano, if you love the freedom for the restoration of Biafra, we are asking you to wake up, join that voice, join the voices to ask the Nigerian government why are they not explaining to the international community, the United States of America asking them, even the British government are asking them through their own channels, foreign bodies are asking them, but Nigeria have continually denied to answer these questions. And that is what we have to go into. We need to raise our voice. We must not allow the extraordinary rendition of Mazen Nandekano to be swept under the carpet. Even though Nigeria may try to release Mazen Nandekano from the back door without answering these questions, this is a question every Biafra must raise his voice. Secondly, Biafra, I want to guarantee everybody that Mazin Nandekano cannot be jailed in the Nigerian court. The leader of indigenous people of Biafra cannot be jailed in the Nigerian court. Nigeria knows that. Their agents know that. All you see, all these agents, agent provocateurs ranting on the social media going crazy is because they know all their game have failed. As long as Chukwu Kikadiyama is alive, and as long as Chukwu Kikadiyama is alive, that they couldn't kill our leader when he was in Kenya, they cannot kill him again. That is one thing they have to know. As long as Mazen Mandekan, we have crossed this stage where they will say they would have killed him. They, since they failed to kill him that nine days, they failed. Chukwu Kikadiyama did not allow them to take away the life of our leader. They may not be able to kill him again. And I am telling all dear friends, we are all going to rise up. If you are not on Twitter, go and register a Twitter account. It is our duty to join voices with the foreign missions. It is our duty to join voices with the Western world. It is our duty to join voices with the friends of their friends to ask Nigeria to explain the reason why 
Mazin Nandekano issue of extraordinary rendition has not been answered. That is number one. On number two, dear friends, I want everybody to be stay very, very pay attention very, very well on this issue. I am trying to explain now and educate dear friends. Sometimes we don't like to mention some people's name on Radio Biafra because they are nobody in what we are doing. But when at a time like this, it is the duty of this leadership and it is the duty of indigenous people of Biafra to alert the world, to alert the world and also inform our brothers and sisters What I am going to talk this afternoon, I am not generalizing this issue on all our brothers on the coastal region. But I am asking them also to rise up because the born traitor who have sold them before, once he has sold them more than once, and his name is Asare Dukubo. He is not worthy to be mentioned on this radio platform. Or he's not worthy to be mentioned by me on this radio platform. But it is a necessity that we must educate our people and inform our people what is happening. At the beginning of this year, the HOD came here call our people from the coastal region to be careful, especially our youths, our brothers, our age brothers from the River Rye area. We ask them to be very careful on allowing themselves to be recruited by Alhaji Asari Dokubo. But some people, it falls on deaf ear. I am bringing it to every Biafran today that Asari Dokubo have engaged in recruitment, contract recruitment of Biafran youths from the River Rai area to come and kill their own brothers in the hinterland. As I am telling you this, many of our Ejo brothers were killed in Imo State, in Ebony State, and they left their dead bodies and ran away. The Asari Dokubo and the, those who are partnering with him, that, that, that those deserve to, their name to be mentioned here. That is why you saw him coming on Facebook three times in a day, coming to say how he will kill Chila Samoru and kill Chike Dozim and kill other people. Asari Dokubo is having a contract last year when Katarina Lange visited the Ajo nation, Asari Dokubo was in that meeting. The leadership was in, informed. When after having that meeting in the coastal region, the British ambassador, Katarina Lange, was in, was in Bayasa. They had a meeting with some of the Ajo youths, but there was a special meeting with Asari Dokubo, which Asari Dokubo later visited Abuja and sealed the contract. Since that time, Asari sealed this contract. He is recruiting our brothers from the River Rai area. And as I can, I'm telling you now, many of our Ajo brothers returned back to the coastal region with a lot of bullet wounds. He recruits them, bring them to Imo State, and they will be killed also by Nigerian military. I don't know the reason why Asari is recruiting his own people, bringing them out in Imo State to be killed. Many of them, their dead bodies are loitered in our places because of 150,000 naira. I am, and most of them that died, we do not know if they actually received the money or not. Some of those who return back alive in the coastal region are claiming that they do not know that they are being sent to go to fight their own brothers in Imo State and in Enugu, in Ebony State. I am calling our brothers in the River Rai area. 
to make sure that they desist from falling in the hands of Asari Dokubo. It is another dimension from the Nigerian government to wipe away our youth from the coastal region. Because the Nigerian government is feeling that those youth there are supporting Biafra. They want the restoration of Biafra. Now they are using Asari Dokubo to recruit them, bring them over to hinterlands, and when they are killed, he's trying to create an enmity that it is our people that are killing them. Go to Imo State. People are bearing, you can ask yourself, how can Nigerian government will allow their own soldier if they are killed and the Nigerian government will not pick up the dead bodies? They will allow, because it is not their people. Because it doesn't concern them. They have no responsibility on those that are being killed. In a couple of days, some of them, you might see their videos, their confessions, if need be. Asari de Kubo, this way you are going is not going to pay you. And also, I'm using this opportunity to ask you, because you said you are calling that every IPOB member should be killed. You said that they should kill every IPOB member. You said that every PG should invite you to come and train them on how to kill IPOB member. Asari de Kubo, we are giving you an express ticket. Come into the hinterland and train people. It is a challenge I am throwing on this Radio Biafra today. Asari de Kubo, this is 2022. This is not two, two, 2004. When you were fighting, when you were militanting in the river right area, Asari de Kubo, you were nobody. You were a common criminal vandalizing pipes, kidnapping, hijacking vessels, and your vision was just in your own area. You can use your vision to compare with Mazen Nandekano in what we are doing. This is a Biafra movement. This is a global movement. This is not something you go and take up contracts and you think you can. I am throwing this challenge on this radio Biafra. Asari Dokubo, if you think you are a man, if you think you are man enough, come into the hinterland of Biafra land, come and train those people you are talking about in our land. Let us see how it will go. Since you think that you are, you can come on the social media and rant, most of us will not come on social media and respond to you. But I am throwing a challenge to you. Those people, those communities, those who want to import you, for you to come, don't send anybody. You say you will come to train them. We are opening the doors for you. Come into the hinterland and come and train them. That is all I will tell you. If you think you are Asari Dokubo, for me, Chiran Samoru, I am nobody. For the leadership of IPOB, you have no respect for. We are nobody. But we are challenging you and I'm asking you today. Come to the hinterlands and come and train those people that will kill IPOB. We are waiting. The scores are already there. If you think you are a man, you think you are Sari Dokubo, come to the hinterlands. We don't have anything to say. Those you are already importing, you see what is happening to them. Come and take their dead bodies. Their dead bodies are littering in the hinterlands of Biafra land. Come and take their dead bodies. And also, I'm using this opportunity to inform their friends in the coastal region. Watch out for those people who return back with bullet wounds. You know, all of you, you know. Tell them that Chukwu Kikadiyama have saved them. They should change. They should change and know that you cannot come and kill yourself for a peanut. Asari Dokubo is bringing all of you to come and die because he wants to remove the youth that can stand for their region. That is the mission Asari Dokubo have come to do. This morning, I'm going to a bony state. This morning, we have seen what Dave Omahi is doing in, in a bony state. A couple of days back, we raised this alarm that Dave Omahi, he's supposed to invade a bony a couple of days back, but he changed his plan. I don't know. They went early this morning burning people houses, killing people, 
these are also Niger even some people from the info intelligence IPO they have this morning they also move people from cross river there are those who cross over with boats to enter the part of Ebony State killing and attacking our people from the bushes those even who run to the bushes area this is the handwork of Dave Umahi Dave Umahi is getting frustrated because he couldn't kill Mazen Namdekano because all the plan, all the billions of Naira they have spent with their agents, everything is falling. In his presence, everything is falling apart. He is getting agitated. He thought that the best way is to kill our people randomly. That is why they have invaded Iko this morning. And they look at what is happening in Iko. They invaded Iko around 3 a.m. this morning with over 20 hillocks of Nigerian military vehicles around six armored vehicles and if you come on share media i don't know how managed one of their uh, um, uh, armored vehicle was demobilized and it was set on fire but this is the work dave umahi is coming because of presidential ambition i am calling our people in a bony state everybody have to rise up it is not the time to point fingers at your brothers who can be able to defend the land this is not the time to point hands on those you have personal issues with them. If you know you are fighting for Biafra, if you know you stand in the restoration of Biafra, it is time all of you rise up. Also this morning, in Imo State, there is also military invasion in Ile, in Nempi, Ibiasebe, or City Hupa. In Olo, they invaded those areas. This morning also, even in Anambara, they invaded Osumo and Lilu. The question is this. Why are these people invading our peaceful communities with military men? Why are they invading? And why is this thing intensifying at this particular moment? Today, you hear in a, in a, in a, in a Boni state. Today, you hear in Nebo state. Why are they invading our communities? Do they want peace? What do they want? IPOB is trying to keep peace in that region. But we can find out for their political interest, like Dave Omahi, he is forming a militia. He already formed a militia, the Gubago, because of a presidential ambition. And it's taking him nowhere. Dave Omahi, if you kill all your people, who are those going to stand for you? We ask. You want a political, uh, you want to be Nigerian vice president or president. If you kill all our people, who is going to stand for you? If truly you think what you are doing is right. We come to Imo State. And I'm respecting the Anambra State Government to call Hopo Zodemma to order. Because Hopo Zodemma is moving military into the Anambra territory. If you come to say, let us look at the boundaries with the boundaries. I do not see the reason why Obiano or the incoming governor of Anambra will be allowing Hopus Odema to use military men from Imo State, invade Anambra, attacking people in Ihiala, attacking and after attacking, they goes back. The governor of Anambra is not saying anything. The governor of Anambra will not ask, why are you invading my state? What is happening in my state? Hope of them have continued early. And if you found out their attack these days has intensified because Asari is supplying more men to his to, to the Nigerian military. And the one thing is this they recruit you, they you come over, they wear you a military uniform, say so you become part of the JTF, they send you in front and they kill you also, and they abandon your dead body. Are, are you not foolish? Are you not foolish, Biafran youths? Those from the coastal region. What are you coming to fight for? Defend your territory. Defend your land. Asari Dokubo is recruiting you people to come and cause havoc. IPOB, we are one family. IPOB is everywhere. We have a strong family in Bayasa. We have in Iguacha. We have in all the coastal region. It is your duty to protect your territory. Do not allow yourself to be used coming into the hinterlands to fight your own people. Because if they don't kill you, 
If the Nigerian government don't kill you, if you fall into the hands of the ESN, you will be killed also. Because you are wearing the uniform of the enemy. You are wearing, carrying the weapon of the enemy. You are being seen as our enemy. If you feel that it is 150,000 Naira, tell your family, will that money be enough? Now, some of you who took that money, your dead body is listening in the hinterland. Is your family, have your family come and pick you up? Will that 150,000 be enough to do your burial, right? Your dead body will be eaten by animals. That is why I'm coming this afternoon to talk to our people at this particular time. And what I'm saying is this. It is time for every Biafran to rise up. IPOB have defeated Nigerian government. That is why they are going into renting and hiring missionaries. IPOB have defeated Nigerian government both in the battlefield, both on the media, both on the court. Everywhere victory is for IPOB. That is why they have resulted in renting missionaries. They are now contracting missionaries and Asari Dokubo because of the hate he has for Mazin Nandekano and IPOB people. And let me inform every one of you, because in IPOB, we follow people by their steps. We don't come and just accuse somebody. We know what we, we are saying. We might be looking at you. We are collecting intelligence on you. When the time comes, we will tell the world. Everybody knew. There was a time Asari Dokubo was giving praises for our leader. That was the time our leader was in transit. That was that one year after the attack in our leader's home. For that one year and one month, Asari Dokubo thought that our leader was killed. Asari Dokubo thought, if, even if our leader appears, that Mazdan de Kano, we may not be physically fit again to lead the people because one of his conditions when we wanted to collaborate with him before it was 10 million dollars and uh, to be the head of biafra if biafra is restored that was two two conditions he gave but when mazin Khan was attacking afaruki beku asari dokubo thought that our leader was wounded or being killed he started to say good words they started to prepare themselves on how to take over. He started to talk as if he was part of the struggle. He started to say, praise our leader, thinking that IPOB will jump on him. While his gangs, you know, those he later formed his customary government, they were all telling him how he has to position himself. The moment our leader arrived in Israel, he found out that our leader was in sound mind. That our leader, nothing happened to our leader. He recovered fully. From that attack, Asari Dokubo gets angry. That was the time he started to attack our leader. The moment he found out our leader appeared in Israel and he was looking good to go, Asari Dokubo got angry and started his attack on Mazen Nandekano and the whole IPOB family. We all know this and we watch them very closely. That's why since they know there was no way He's going to take over the leadership of IPOB. They later formed the Biafra customary government. And today, where are they? The one thing I want to make very clear is this. Our brothers in the River Rai area, they know Asari Dokubo very well. They know he is the number one saboteur, the number one betrayal in that geographical sphere of Biafra. They know what we are saying. That is all he can do. Maybe when he fell contracting a job people, he may move to start contracting Fulani people also from other places. That is his job. His job is to contract people to come and fight. You know the Islamic way. But one thing I'm saying, and I will repeat, Asari Dokubo have threw a challenge that he will kill all IPOB members. Asari Dokubo have threw a challenge calling the PGs. We are asking the PGs who are interested to work with Asari Dokubo to do what? To invite him to his community to come and train the people that we kill IPOD. Makachineke, if Asari, you are a man, step into the hinterland and come and train people. 
Mazi, Mazi, I Peters, I thank you for giving me this small opportunity to come on the air to tell our people what is happening and to ask our people to be at a lot because now that we have defeated the Nigerian government, they have no option. They will try their best to come and cause havoc as their usual way to fight our people. Dave Umayi has failed the billions of Naira they have spent trying to destroy IPUB from internal. It's all destroyed. All their mission, their agents, they have all failed and they are crying woefully. One thing is this, IPUB in 1,000 years, they have never borne the person that can destroy this movement until Biafra is restored. They have never borne you. You can try, you can cry, you can scream. Whatever you do, we are watching you. Try, if you say you are a man, let us see. We are all living people. We are not aliens. If you think you can destroy IPOB, I, I, the door is already open. Seven months is over. You can't do anything. You can yab. You can entertain people. But when it comes to the real deal, the IPOB is in charge. The IPOB leadership is in charge. Mazen Nam the Kano is not a fool to hand over the leadership of, to ask people he asked in this movement to, to continue to stay this, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, vessel until he's out. He is not a foolish person to tell Chike Dozim to be in charge of this, this movement. He is not a stupid person to allow people like China Sawaru to be in the DOS or to allow like the deputy Mazitonis Runike, Mazin Nacha, Zayoba, about the people. You think he don't know something? You think he don't know people he left on the directorate of state? You think he don't know? He knows their ability. He knows they are ready to wage this war. And if, if not that Mazen Nam the Kano, we must follow his instructions. Whenever he tells us to stop and stop, we stop. If not, these enemies would have seen another side of this movement. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. And thank you for all the work you are doing. Even yeah. at your age, you continue to stand for this movement. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 All right, this is Radio Biafra. We're still doing it. It doesn't matter how long it takes. As long as we're breathing the air every day, we get well. We'll be here. Biafra is our thing. If we finish, don't finish the job. I know we are very aware that the younger people, the younger generations, they have all worked.